yes, welcome to, oh, kickstand's down. I was going to say welcome to Bikes of Rye. Got interrupted. Just got my S1000R, my 2022 model, serviced. It's first annual service. And I've just jumped off a S1000XR. <laughs> I'll back onto this bike. And it's so different to ride. They're completely different bikes. Even though they share the same engine and the frame is very, very similar. <laughs> it's completely different to ride. And I'm going to have to get used to it again because, yeah, I had the XR for the day, which I did a uh, last minute review on because I didn't expect to have it for the day. And so, hey, I thought, why not get a review out for the channel? But yeah, in this video, I want to discuss with you guys, uh, give you an update, a one year ownership update, give you an insight into BMW ownership, S1000R ownership. So yeah, if you want to know a bit more, then please stick around. Give it a squirt up here, we're in Dynamic Pro. Calm yourself down, son. So I guess you're wondering, how much did the service cost? What was involved? Well, the interesting thing is that typically when you have a bike service, so or when you try to maintain a bike, the recommendation is usually that you change your breakthrough in every couple of years, every two years. BMW, weirdly, recommend that for the first year of ownership, you change the brake fluid, and then it's every two years from then on. Which means I had to pay a little bit extra. I also had, obviously, fresh oil, and a new filter, and a health check. Now, all of that came to 250 squid. <laughs> it's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of money for very little, to be quite frank. And I had the loan bike, which wasn't out of courtesy. I had to pay for that too. I had to put the fuel in it. So that cost me roughly another 25 squid. Now, it is advised that you do get your bike serviced especially when new, because it will help hold its resale value. It's more attractive when you go to sell it. When you've got it in Dynamic Pro, it doesn't half make a racket. <laughs> usually when I go around cities, towns, I, I usually sit back in road. But for the purpose of the video, I want to show you how, <laughs> how loud this exhaust system is. Oh, it leans over beautifully. Lean me over, baby. Whoa, traffic. <laughs> Gotta be careful. Gotta be careful. Gotta be careful, son. If you're new here, I want to take this opportunity to kind of direct you to some more of my content. I'm in the process of rebuilding a Honda Blackbird. And actually, when this video goes live, I might have got it back on the road already. Uh, I say already, it's taken me a while. <laughs> it's quite a few videos out so far on it. And it's such good fun. So I'm going to link it on the screen for you. I also have a second bike, a Yamaha Thunder Race, which I'm going to start on soon. And so this channel, yeah, we're all about rebuilding bikes and uh, running bikes, reviews, all that good stuff so yeah if you're new here subscribe check out my other videos thank you very much now how about reliability well you know it's only a year old 3200 miles as mentioned i've had no issues starts every time and do you know i lay it up for winter but i don't even put on like a trickle charge or anything i pull it out of hibernation i mean it's been off the road maybe four or so months thereabouts 
and it will start straight up so that's charging the battery like the tech on it i mean it's full of tech right so you'd expect something to maybe go a little bit faulty i haven't had to go back to bmw about anything really it all works every time i ask it to do something quick shifter is always so damn precise quick shifter is always working as i want it to do no miss gears now i'm going to give you a rundown of all the modifications i've made to my s1000r but before i do so because i'm sure many of you are wondering does this make a difference now before i go into does that make a difference or not let me tell you this is the sport variant okay so you get the s1000r then you get the sport model and then you get an M Sport. What comes as standard on the Sport are things like semi-active suspension, both front and rear. Other things that come as standard are things like heated grips. We have cruise control. We have keyless start. And let me just start the bike, fire it back up again. We have an LED daytime running light and the headlights have things like cornering abilities, cornering light abilities or whatever never really seen it in action uh, anything else oh there's a usb underneath the rear seat um, and other things like it's got rider modes dynamic pro means that you can set the bike up so you can change the wheelie control engine braking abs things like that which you can't do if you only have the sport model and things like this bottom fairing piece in red that comes on the sport and you get it in red or you get it in Hockenheim silver. Now the modifications to my bike, this windscreen, right? I've had this fitted very recently and yes, it does make a slight difference. I really got it though, just to try and make the bike just look a little bit more purposeful at the front because in previous videos, you know my thoughts on the headlight. I'm not so keen. I mean, it does look quite cool with the LED headlight, but once, you turn that light off, it just looks a little bit basic at the front end. Other modifications, obviously we have a full Black Widow system. So we've got headers through to the slip-on and I'll link those guys in the description. Also the bike's been tuned by BHP UK, which means, well, we don't have an annoying cold start feature, which I'll show you. Basically the bike just, it goes starts up straight to idle and the bike's putting out more power now it's 169 horsepower uh, bhp uk if you want your s1000r tuned i'll link them in the description as well they will send you a device which you can basically plug into a uh, obd port i think it's called underneath your rear seat so you can do it from the comfort of your own home let me turn that back off because it's quite loud <laughs> So yeah, they can send you a device and you just plug it into an OBD port and you can, yeah, you can tune your bike from the comfort of your own home. They'll send you it all remotely. Our other things, I've got PPF protection. So that means that this, well, we've got a smoked uh, film over the front headlight and everything that's red has a see-through clear film on it to protect it basically from scratches and stone chips. These mirrors, they're gonna go very soon. Uh, I'm going to get some bar owned ones. Also, this tail tidy is going to go as well because I've got the, well, I've got the tail tidy at home. Just haven't got around to fitting it yet. All right, then a one year summary of my ownership with this S1000R of mine. I'm going to tell you, it's a bike that I'm still thoroughly enjoying. I'm no way at all bored of it yet. It frightens me still to date. And every time I go out on it, I learn something new because you can just take the mic with it. I mean, it's full of rider mode, so it really does look after you, but switch all of that off and get it a little bit out of hand, <laughs> which I have done. Yeah, you can get it back under control and you learn something new every time you ride it, which is what I love about it, okay? I mean, if we talk about things like the running costs, because you know I had this bike service just now, uh, the rear tire that's covered 3200 miles and it's still got plenty of meat on it which impresses me because you know it's not cheap to own one of these bikes i have modified this bike and upgraded some of the parts like it has a full exhaust system now it's been tuned and i feel like some of the things that let this bike down in standard form such as the engine note i mean in standard form the engine sounds completely it's just it's a terrible engine note so with the exhaust system now and with the tune, I feel like it's much improved in those areas. Still not sold on the looks, 
As you see, I've fitted that windscreen. I'm gonna fit some bar and mirrors, as I've mentioned. Hopefully that'll improve the looks more. But when I ride it, I don't think about the looks. All I think about is how the bike feels below me. And it's just an absolute weapon. I mean, you can ride it fast and you can ride it slow, which is brilliant because right around town, it rides slow. It's so comfortable as well. I could easily do 300 miles. And yes, it is a sporty riding position, but never have I got off it and thought, oh, you know, I'm absolutely crooked. And yeah, I'm gonna own the bike for another year at least minimum so there'll be much more content i really need to do a lot more content on this bike and take it out more because yeah 3,000 miles in a year probably not the best use of this bike so yeah look out for more of these videos in the future and with that said i'm going to end it here so i hope you enjoyed it let me know all your thoughts and opinions in the comment section below hope to see you on another one very soon thanks for watching see you later